Okay, try this again. So I am trying to record just a quick video just showing a uh, little fix I need to do on my Zen U50 SBS limited edition here. Really like this watch. Love the. This is basically fully tegmented and black coated. Um, and it's got that nice blue gradient dial. Um, it's a great watch. Um, the only thing is, uh, I noticed after two months, I think roughly after I got it, um, usually I have a routine, especially when I take it to work, I'll clean my watches and, you know, my soap, water under the sink, and then usually I'll also pop open, if possible, any kind of extension, either micro adjust or, in this case, a dive extension, because I want to just make sure I can get in there and uh, wash out or clean up any kind of debris or dust or whatever that might get in between those areas, right? And as such, when I was doing that one time, a little bit more recently, I guess, because this thing, a replacement part took about 40 business days or something like that is what they quoted me up to. Uh, so better, and that's what, five days, five, that's about eight weeks, yeah, it's about two months almost, about approximately and anyways, um, what was I saying? Yeah, so two months after I actually got the watch and then I've been cleaning, I just noticed that this part was starting to like come out. You see, I noticed that this part of the screw here, it holds this dive extension. And if you move it enough, you can see how that pops up. And then if you pull it enough, this whole thing could come through. And I thought, wait a minute, is that really like that? And then I looked on this side you see there's kind of a hole here. And so I have another H-Link Zen bracelet that has the same setup, uh, just that it's in stainless steel, not black coated or tegmented, but otherwise it's the same uh, design. And I looked at that that one, uh, the silver one, and I noticed that it had a kind of a, it should have been like a cap that basically filled in and matched this side. And so I suspect somewhere, somehow, I don't even know when, I don't think I dropped it when I got it. I think maybe during the manufacturing, somehow that little piece was missing. So over time you move it, you can imagine it's potentially, you know, you could maybe wiggle this this uh, screw out. I, I mean, I think it takes a lot to do that. Um, but, you know, as I'm cleaning, I don't want it to drop down the sink and then, okay, I'm going to be uh, shit out of luck uh, trying to find a replacement that's proper to get in there and so I showed uh, this to watch by so the official you know authorized uh, dealer retailer for Zen and other German watches in the United States that's where I got this from and I showed them to explain the problem and show them some pictures and basically yeah you know this should count as a manufacturing defect um, parts like that shouldn't be coming off and and I showed the comparison to the silver one anyway so they decided they uh, ship me and order a new part from Zen and it'll take a couple of weeks or well, a couple up to basically eight weeks um, uh, to get that but you know better than nothing and you know for the most part I don't use this this extension as um, you know, at all because I don't really go diving and this is way too much for a uh, you know a micro adjust you know this is definitely over a wetsuit so as long as I keep it closed, which mostly will, it's not going to go anywhere. It can't fall out. But in case one of these days, somehow I'm not, I'm careless. I'm, it just happens to be more lucid than normal and whatever. And, and maybe just simply it's, it just, if I put it down this way, it could potentially just drop right out like that. Um, maybe if I actually do wear it for diving or somebody, if I let them use this, um, you know, with this extension out, if this somehow comes loose, then that'll be it. That this whole bracelet will separate, and um, you know, the watch will slip off into the depths of the water. And even though this is a 500 meter watch, I don't think it's going to be really realistic for anyone to go down that deep or however to try to retrieve uh, my lovely watch from me. It just slips off. So, uh, yeah, so I wanted to get that fixed. So I got the part in yesterday, finally, and uh, 
we're going to have a look at that. And off the bat, I can tell you that I think there are, it's not exactly the same. You know, I told him the model and everything, but um, let's close this part of it up so you can see better um, about this extension. And I don't want that part to fall out, but finish wise, I feel visually to me, this is uh, ever so slightly lighter. And then I also noticed that there are some differences too in the, um, let me see if I can zoom up better. There are some differences in the, say this part, see this part that sticks up is wider on the new one versus this one's more narrower. And you can kind of see that in relationship to the, the mid length, like that piece is kind of, you know, it's shorter than not quite as wide as the end length versus this one is closer to being, or rather the mid length is, is closer to being almost the same width. You can just if you kind of lift this up, you can kind of see where it is. It's not, it's definitely not the same width, right? That's one thing you can notice also that the class, this part of it is different. I think this curves down a little bit more as well as, um, because of that, I think this part, the mid, the, generally this midsection seems to be a little bit wider than this one. This is just a bit more straight. Um, and also, you'll notice that the uh, Zen and whatever this funny symbol is right down here, maybe it's it's the material or the, the process that you're using for this tegument and, and the black coating, I don't know. But I imagine it has something to do with that. Uh, somebody explained in the comments. Um, you'll notice that the the way this is engraved, it's just a it's just a bit nicer. So I think it actually seems a little bit deeper, just a little bit cleaner and deeper inset. I think, and it's actually coming up brighter too. Like this shows up as almost a, closer to almost a silver, versus this one is is more toned down. Not a big deal, but there are some differences, and you can definitely see. I think also this is not as define the, the way this engraved is also a bit deeper and so you can see this one isn't as much so it looks a little bit more lost in a way but I mean normally I can see it just fine but if I'm comparing the two then this one does have more detail or definition to the engraving. Um, the bottom of the class part is basically the same but I do think that the new one is just a hair uh, longer this way because when I can put them next to each other we can see and it's kind of in the shadows here I'm trying to put them match them as best I can um, this part is just a little bit longer than this uh, this this length here and you see the, the holes here I think they're generally in the same spot but uh, the holes this is already on the, the mid uh, setting and this one is also two. So if that's the case, and you look at the the uh, mid link here, you see how it's basically almost in line with this edge versus on mine, you can see it sticks up a bit. So there's definitely some differences there. And I imagine it's because this is somehow just a bit shorter than this one. It's really hard to tell until you put it up to each other. And you can kind of see where that, that the difference is also the fit cut is different too. This one, mine was has softer, I would say, corners or edging here on either side, and as, as opposed to the new one, you can see it's sharper. Let me just put these up to each other. Try to see how the like the way it reflects. This has a softer edge than this one. And um, I'm not sure which one I like more. I think this is the one that I've been used to, at least on the old, or at least on my 104s that I've worn, and even the 103 that I have a H-Link bracelet for. I always seem to remember this being, yeah, it's kind of on the softer side versus this. I mean, this, this has a, a little bit cleaner or crisper edge 
sharper edge. It's not really sharp at all, but compared to this one, yeah, that one looks definitely looks sharper. And you'll also notice the, the, the surface profile. The old one is a bit more rounded versus you can see here the new one is a bit more flatter and you can kind of see it over here and um, yeah it just seems overall the surface is is flatter than this one and you can kind of just tell you know because especially since the way this is rounded on the sides more um, the class itself is slightly different shaped. I mean, not class, but this this part that folds over. Um, you see where the this detent is? It's a little bit different. This is a little bit higher up, and this one is lower down toward the bottom slightly more. And because of that, when you flip it up, this is a little easier. The hole is like, you see how this dips down? And, and this, how close this hole that that part locks into is right there from the edge as compared to this one. And this one has a longer, slightly longer swing, at least there's more material here. You can see it doesn't dip down into here the same. See, it's a little bit more, kind of follows this line a little bit more straighter across, whereas this one goes here and it kind of goes down a little bit. Definitely see that there, right? How that's different, and then consequently, see where the holes are, where that hole is. It's supposed to meet up with the detent in here. I'm gonna flip it over. It's further down from this edge, you know, down here versus you see this compared to how far it is down from this edge. It's much closer, so that's why this one snaps in a little bit easier, like that, pretty quick. This one, it starts to hit the sides and then there's a little bit more friction and then so there's a bit more feel like there's a little bit more effort to push it down a little bit more travel before it snaps in but when it does it feels quite and it sounds more secure than the other one and it is this one you definitely need to put more effort into pulling this open versus this one even just like that it just it just pulls open not super loose at all but it's definitely um easier in that sense so but this one yeah it is more secure now we pop it open we took a look at this part so i don't know maybe which one is an older design i feel that this might still be an older design this might be a newer refined one but other than that it's pretty much the same you can see the holes for right inside here is different. This is a little more rounded, that hole at the end of this split here versus this one. I'm trying to, it's kind of covered by a shadow, put my finger behind it maybe. You can see it's more elongated, that hole right the eyelet up here. It's a little bit more like a pill shape versus this one. It's just more straight up, you know, kind of round right at the end there. Uh, they both say, if you can read that, um, my German's not good, Elderstahl, is that stainless steel? Well, it should be tegument to steel, but anyways, uh, let's say this, this part of the, um, this fold over part is a little bit different. You see how this is straight and then it goes down and then it comes in and goes down versus this one it's straight right up here so it's not as doesn't extend down as long and then it goes in and you can kind of see that I think right there you can see how see how it's higher yeah, that this, this cuts in here more higher up I guess um, and I thought maybe earlier I felt that this one was ever so slightly thicker, this material, but I think I put it up to each other and they feel about the same. Now where you see another difference is, um, okay, this part that I have to address. So this is the part that I showed you earlier that was coming loose, this thing. See how this is, how the size of that, I don't know what you call that, 
little pin head or something. <laughs> screw pin. It's not a screw though, it's just pin basically. The, the top of that pin head there, how big that is compared to this guy. And you can see more metal around it and also that little dot of that pin head is a little bit smaller compared to this one. You can see, definitely see the difference there. Uh, and it's made different, and because of that, I mean, this is just made differently on, on this, on the opposite side where that one was missing it, like a piece um, of the extension. One side that's missing on, on right here. See, there's like a bit of a cavity or a hole. There should be another cap or something to hold that pin in better. Uh, this one, I don't know. If there's actually a small one of those in here that's holding one end, but I don't see it wiggling out quite as easy or as much as that one. Not that that was a lot, but um, yeah. Uh, what else was I going to say? God, I hope I'm not recording vertically. I have to turn this <laughs> thing sideways, I think, later. Uh, anyways, I'm not going to switch, re-record now. Um, what else was there? Oh, also the way that this, um, see how that indentation is? That's where it folds over. And when it goes here, there's a, there's a matching piece on the side here, somewhere that goes into there to help it click in. You can see the dimension of that. It's very, you know, it's almost kind of elongated hexagon, but you can see it's pretty decent kind of notch, or, you know, right in there, versus the old one, or at least the one on here, you can see, see how that's thinner looking, not as wide and, and more elongated, so that's the different, but I mean, the closing feel, I have to admit, I don't think it was all that different though, despite that. This one's fused. I think it is slightly snappier. Yeah. And that's about it, really. Um, that locks in like that. Just this one. And not too different. But definitely the closing action is different. This one just has a little bit more, before, a little bit more resistance before it snaps into place, and this really holds in. Versus this one, does feel a little bit easier to open compared to this guy. But um, yeah, I should replace this. It'll be a little bit different, but I'll keep this around. But I think this part that I want to replace on the extension, even though I don't use it much on that dive extension. It'd just be good to have that kind of resolved and not be a worry for that pin to drop out. At least that I don't think that would be the case with the new one. And I think the color match is close enough. Before it looked, felt a bit more different in tone, but it should be the same. But definitely the profile is different here. You know, it's just, this one definitely gives a more flatter feel. Versus this one's got softer and a bit more, ever so slightly more roundedness to it. And uh, yeah, I guess I gotta get the, all I need to do is just uh, undo the hex screw here and the one on that side. And then I just attach it to this one and that should be it. So um, I guess let me get around to doing that real quick. Hopefully these tools will work. So it should be the same as the other 104 bracelet. So move it from I'm trying to match it up what I'm doing here. Excuse me if it gets off camera for a bit. This is the case, then I should be able to do one of these. Okay. 
right side, left side, take the same, so I do that. So I put this over on this side. Then I'm gonna put this one on. Just fit in just like that. Alright, should just fit in like that. Okay. And then this goes in like so. Try to um, okay. I was backspin it a little bit, just like screwing down a crown, just to make sure you feel the threads interlock properly at the beginning, so you don't do any stupid cross threading. And that should do it. Double check. I thought maybe I slipped at the end. Um, so it should be like this. Okay, I don't want to over tighten it. So that's that. So I'll get this back down on here. And I'm going to turn this around and undo this side. Maybe it might be easier if I put that there. I think this one will be kind of the opposite here. So the short one is on this side. Pop that guy out. Oh, no. Long is on this side. And then... Pop this one out on this side. Come on. That goes there. So I can fully remove this. And then this should fall into place. Like so. So we're going to put the long pin in to hold everything together. Give it a little wiggle so it can kind of get in there easier. Push this in. And then I'm going to do, I'm trying to hold this side. It should be fine. And I put some pressure and just do a backspin. There. Maybe you could have heard that and see that drop in a little bit. And I'll just quickly do this. These numbers and then really crank it down by holding it like that. And then go like that. Just do it enough so it feels just tight enough. You don't want to go off and crank it, over crank it, and then crap, it's like a few super loose all of a sudden. It's like, oh, great, there goes the threads. And that should be it, I think. Let's see how this looks together. There we go. Okay. Let me. See, look, look, look. See how that's backing out already? That's what I was worried about. I and mean, if you do it enough, it would just slip all the way out and who knows where it's gonna end up, right? So that's why I needed to replace that. I should not have an issue with that one. It's made a little bit differently. It doesn't have the same as I showed you. It's a little bit, just a bit different. So lock that in, snap that in, and then Always good to have a, st a s 
stock of small uh, Ziploc baggies for end links and screws and whatever uh, parts of accessories that you want to keep all together and that will go back uh, I think back into the, the, the box which is back home later uh, let's see should I even bother putting that cardboard back into I mean they did cap this but I don't know it seems like I guess I could have used this what they gave me instead huh uh, sorry put this away I think it goes in like so Maybe if I go in from the other way, it's easier. Yeah. Yeah, and then this falls over this part, I believe. Oops. Snap down wrong. There we go. And then... I don't know, something like that. I'll be used what they gave me. There we go, and then extra protection just back in here. All right, this actually goes to my 104 bracelet, and so I will leave these tools. I have the extra wings for that one. Let's send it back there. Okay, sorry. So, uh, yeah, I think this will work. I was worried that the tone of this was a little bit dark, lighter than the original. But honestly, you can't really you know, tell the difference. Which is good, because I didn't want it to... Uh, let me back up a bit. I just was worried that my mental block, like, like once you know that, or at least you think you know that the color is slightly different, oh, that's all I can see, but it's fine. I think this just works out better as well because the other one was a bit softer edge and this has a lot of hard lines. It's not the best class still, but I think over the old one, the, the, the original one, and I think it's maybe possibly the older style, this is just flatter and this sides seem cleaner than that previous one and so I'll we'll pop this open just want to make sure it feels nice and comfy yeah I don't we'll see I have to basically wear it out but I don't suspect it'll be too much problem yeah that's a killer watch Anyways, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to show uh, that little issue I had. And maybe if you have a bracelet, you might want to check your uh, dive extension as well to see if it's got that issue where the pin could kind of uh, separate and and you might split it. And if you lose that pin, then you can't put the bracelet back together properly, right? So you don't want that to happen. And if you do see that, maybe... Uh, if you did get it from uh, watch buys, you can maybe contact them to see if uh, they can get the replacement for you, uh, at least the class part, and then replace the whole bracelet. And uh, that should be good. Otherwise, yeah, be careful with that. All right, thanks for watching. And yeah, uh, if I didn't mention, I had my Zen 103 Classic 12. This is a beauty, but unfortunately, Fortunately slash unfortunately, um, I did recently just sell it. I mean, I heard a cha-ching uh, from my eBay, and I guess somebody bought this. Because uh, I didn't want to reduce the price on this. I, you know, I bought it for a certain amount, and I wanted to make sure I got back at least as much. If not a tad over, that wouldn't have hurt. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that's all covered and uh, as best as possible. And, you know, if I can at least get a certain amount back, I can feel, I can be a bit more prepared to let it go rather than get it, get low-balled and sell it for less than I want. Then, yeah, I don't want to do that. And I still like the watch. But again, if it was going for 
the price that I wanted to get it for sell it at, then okay, I guess um, if that if and when that happens, then um, I will have my time with this. But um, uh, there will be other and probably better things on the horizon because of that the sale. And and my thinking was um, I could probably it's easier for me to find I think. I look at my watch collection if I'm going to sell something and maybe possibly replace it like if this had to go because like again someone actually did buy it uh for the right price uh for me that is <laughs> then um you know a reverse panda chronograph there are actually quite a lot of good options out there for that general style maybe not exactly but um you know it is possible to get that replaced or if I really wanted to, I guess people are still selling theirs. I could maybe buy one back, but I doubt that's going to happen. I probably want to try something different. Um, and if it is something similar, then it will still be something different. And I think the closest thing might be a Hoyer Octavia. Um, you know, that watch, it's, there's a lot of, I mean, this, you know, definitely a lot of similarities to this one. Um, but I don't know. I might, we'll see. Anyways, enough about that. It's about this and that. Thanks for watching and enjoy your watches.